All babies under 8 months old and some older infants should get an injectable RSV drug starting this fall, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. An advisory committee to the CDC voted unanimously on Thursday afternoon to recommend the injection, then CDC Director Mandy Cohen formally endorsed that recommendation, thereby allowing the drug to be distributed to the public. The shot is intended for two groups, the first is babies up to eight months old who are born during or entering their first respiratory syncytial virus season, which typically starts around October. The second is infants between 8 and 19 months who are at increased risk of severe RSV disease and entering their second RSV season. Newborns born shortly before or during RSV season should get the shot in their first week of life, the committee said. The injection, sold under the name Bayfortis, acts similarly to a vaccine, but instead of prompting the immune system to develop antibodies to the virus, what's known as active immunization, it delivers the antibodies directly to the bloodstream via so-called passive immunization. Expectant parents and parents of infants under the age of 8 months, as well as those with older babies, should talk with their healthcare providers and request this added layer of protection against RSV this season, the CDC said in a statement. Until now, no RSV-specific drugs or vaccines had been approved for use among all infants in the U.S. The only available option was an injection that protects high-risk infants. Yet RSV can be severe among children, it leads to up to 80,000 hospitalizations and up to 300 deaths a year among those under age 5 in the U.S. Last year's season started early and led to a dramatic spike in severe illness that overwhelmed children's hospitals. Parents should be very, very much relieved that they won't have to be concerned about the likelihood that their child could be hospitalized with RSV disease, so we do believe that this is a breakthrough, Dr. Sarah Long, a member of the CDC's advisory committee and pediatrics professor at Drexel University College of Medicine, said Thursday. The Food and Drug Administration approved Bayfortis last month, and the injection is already approved in Europe, Canada and the United Kingdom. The shot is made by AstraZeneca and marketed by Sanofi, which said Bayfortis is expected to be available in the U.S. ahead of the 2023-2024 RSV season. In a study of nearly 1,500 infants, Bayfortis lowered the risk of developing a respiratory illness from RSV that required a doctor's visit by nearly 75% for at least five months. The percentage was slightly lower in a study of babies born prematurely, which raises the risk of a severe RSV infection. Recommended. Health New. The most common side effects in the trials were rashes and reactions around the injection site. The FDA said last month that Bayfortis will come with a warning about extreme immune responses such as anaphylaxis, a severe allergic reaction, which have been observed with other monoclonal antibodies. The drug should also be given with caution to infants and children with clinically significant bleeding disorders, the FDA said. Children who have received Bayfortis should not get the other existing RSV drug, Synergis, for the same RSV season, the CDC committee said Thursday. Bayfortis is expected to be listed at a price of $495, though the cost to individual consumers will depend on their insurance plans. Long said she was extraordinarily disappointed with that price. However, the shot will be covered under the CDC's Vaccines for Children program which makes some vaccines and immunizations free to children who are uninsured, underinsured, Medicare-eligible, or American Indian or Alaska natives. Most children have been infected with RSV by age 2. The virus causes a lower respiratory illness that is generally mild, but in serious cases can lead to pneumonia or bronchiolitis, which inflames airways and clogs them with mucus. Older adults and babies under 6 months old are particularly susceptible to severe outcomes. The FDA recently approved two RSV vaccines for older adults, one from Pfizer and another from GSK. An advisory committee to the FDA also recommended in May that the agency approve Pfizer's maternal RSV vaccine, which is administered to pregnant mothers in order to protect their babies. The FDA is expected to decide next month whether to approve that shot. Castor oil has long been considered a jack-of-all-trades home remedy, used as a laxative, a moisturizer, and as a chest rub to ease lung congestion. Now some people on TikTok claim they're using castor oil as a way to treat vision problems. Doctors warn that's a way to ruin your eyes. Dozens of videos that have gotten millions of views show people rubbing castor oil over their eyelids, across their eyelashes and under their eyes to help treat issues like dryness, floaters, cataracts, poor vision, and even glaucoma. 
Castor oil is a type of vegetable oil produced by pressing the seeds of the castor bean plant. It's been used for thousands of years in traditional and folk medicine to treat a range of issues from bronchitis to skin infections. It's considered safe to take as a laxative, but because of potentially severe side effects like vomiting and dizziness, castor oil isn't widely used anymore. That hasn't stopped TikTokers from promoting it. One woman insisted that after two weeks of use, she no longer needs to wear reading glasses as often because castor oil has helped her vision. Another said it helped prevent an eye infection from progressing and got rid of her floaters, the strands of gel-like fluid in the eye that cast shadows on the retina. Castor oil's moisturizing properties make it a common ingredient in over-the-counter eye drops. However, those products are specifically formulated and tested to treat eye dryness, doctors say. The bottles of castor oil on store shelves are not intended for use in the eyes and may contain preservatives, dyes, fragrances or other ingredients that can cause irritation or infection. There is limited research that eye drops formulated with a low-concentration castor oil mixture help with dry eyes and blepharitis, or inflammation of the eyelids. But the studies are of low quality, experts say, involving small sample sizes and no control groups. We just can't make a recommendation for something that has very little evidence behind it, said Dr. Ashley Brissett, a spokesperson for the American Academy of Ophthalmology and assistant professor at Well Cornell Medicine in New York. Castor oil is not a cure-all. If you have concerns about your eyes, you need to see an ophthalmologist. What castor oil can and can't do for eye health. Castor oil has no effect on cataracts, an age-related condition that causes cloudy vision, floaters, or glaucoma which occurs when fluid accumulates and damages the optic nerve, Dr. Vicky Chan, a practicing ophthalmologist in Los Angeles, said. These conditions occur inside the eyeball, Chan said, so even if you put a drop of castor oil on your eye, it's not going to seep in and dissolve or fix anything. Castor oil does make a great moisturizer though, Brissette said. It contains ricinoleic acid, a type of fatty acid that prevents water loss through the skin, a reason why it's found in soaps, cosmetics, and lotions. So if castor oil gets into the eyes, that moisturizing may explain why some people feel like it's improving vision, Brissette said. Your eyes need to be hydrated to see clearly, and one of the biggest complaints of dry eye disease is actually blurry or fluctuating vision, said Brissette. There are also claims that castor oil helps promote eyelash and eyebrow growth, but no studies to date have tested the theory. Castor oil is safe for external use on the skin. Putting castor oil that isn't sterile directly in the eye may cause infection, Dr. Chantal Krieger, an ophthalmologist with the National Eye Institute, warned. Other eye risks include irritation, allergic reactions, adverse interactions with eye medications, discomfort and inflammation. And don't replace medications and other treatments with castor oil with the hopes that you can cure your condition more naturally, Brissett said. Ignoring glaucoma medication, for example, can lead to permanent vision loss. Or waiting to see if castor oil improves cataracts instead of opting for timely surgery could make them more difficult to remove and increase the risk of surgical complications, Brissett said. How to keep your eyes healthy. There are ways to protect your eyes. Kazuno Krieger suggests the 20-20-20 rule, when focusing your eyes for long periods of time on a book or computer, for example, take a 20-second break looking at something 20 feet or more away every 20 minutes. This will reduce eye fatigue and strain. Brissette says you should wash your eyelids with an eyelid-formulated cleanser every night. That helps remove the buildup of dust, bacteria, and other pollution that eyelids and lashes trap throughout the day. Other expert-recommended ways to protect the eyes include Eat a balanced diet high in leafy greens. Remove makeup before bed. Wear appropriate safety eyewear during tasks like grinding and sanding, or during sports like racquetball or paintball. Wear sunglasses outdoors. Keep up with regular eye exams. The American Academy of Pediatrics reaffirmed its support for gender-affirming medical care for transgender children on Thursday, even as the treatments face a growing push for bans and restrictions from Republican lawmakers across the U.S. The board of directors for the group, which represents 67,000 pediatricians, unanimously voted to reaffirm its 2018 position on the treatments. The board also voted to provide additional documents to support pediatricians, including clinical and technical reports, and to conduct an external review of research regarding the care. The additional recommendations also reflect the fact that the board is concerned about restrictions to accessing evidence-based health care for young people who need it, Mark Del Monte, 
the Academy's CEO, said in a statement released by the group, calling the restrictions enacted by states unprecedented government intrusion. We therefore need to provide the best and most transparent process possible, he said. At least 21 states have now enacted laws restricting or banning gender-affirming medical care for transgender minors, and most of those states face lawsuits. A federal judge struck down Arkansas's ban as unconstitutional, and federal judges have temporarily blocked bans in Alabama and Indiana. The judge who struck down Arkansas's ban cited the position of the groups in his ruling against the ban. Arkansas has appealed the judge's decision. People opposed to such treatments for children argue they are too young to make such decisions about their futures. Every major medical group, including the Academy and the American Medical Association, has opposed the bans and has said the treatments are safe if administered properly. The Academy and the AMA support allowing children to seek the medical care, but they don't offer age-specific guidance. The nation's health insurance system is undergoing tremendous upheaval as an estimated 8.2 million people will need to find new coverage since pandemic protections for Medicaid enrollees came to an end this spring. That's leaving many patients confused about how to get new medical insurance. It's an overwhelming task, said Taffy Morrison, who is working to connect Louisiana residents to new coverage through the nonprofit Southwest Louisiana Area Health Education Center. But Morrison reminds people, don't panic. There is help. For many of those kicked off Medicaid, a state federal health insurance program that covers people with low incomes and disabilities, new insurance will come from their employers. Others may need to turn to the Affordable Care Act online marketplaces to replace their coverage. Elevance insurance officials told investors in mid-July they were seeing signs of movement from Medicaid to exchange plans as states ramp up reviews of who still qualifies for the public insurance program. The company, formerly called Anthem, reported 18.2% growth in its exchange plans from the year before, with its marketplace plans now covering at least 949,000 people. To prevent gaps in insurance coverage, some states, such as California and Rhode Island, will automatically enroll people who lose Medicaid in such marketplace plans. But elsewhere, Morrison and workers at similar nonprofit health groups nationwide are helping people navigate the difficult administrative process of finding the right plan. Known as navigators or assisters and publicly funded, they work with patients free of charge. Consumers should be wary of anyone charging to assist them in finding coverage or pushing a particular plan. Misleading marketing has led some people to plans that aren't actually insurance, such as healthcare sharing ministries, which don't necessarily cover members' medical bills. The dramatic reshuffling of insurance coverage comes with the end of federal COVID pandemic protections. States were barred from kicking enrollees off Medicaid during the pandemic to ensure people had access to health care. As a result, the program swelled by 30% from February 2020 to December 2022 to cover about 92 million people, including children who receive coverage under CHIP, the Children's Health Insurance Program. Now, for the first time since 2020, states have resumed checking whether enrollees remain eligible. The first batch of numbers are rolling in. So far, more than 3.7 million people have lost coverage in 39 states and the District of Columbia. And in June alone, more than 50,000 of them lived in Louisiana, according to state data. Of the more than 151,000 beneficiaries files the state reviewed in a single month, Nearly 13,000 people no longer qualified for Medicaid but roughly 38,000 additional people lost coverage because they did not submit a renewal packet for the state to determine whether they still qualified. Morrison's group of 50 navigators across the state will now try to make a dent in those numbers as coverage losses are expected to grow. Patient advocates in Louisiana and elsewhere agree on one crucial first step Medicaid enrollees must take regardless of eligibility status they must fill out and return their Medicaid renewal packets. That Medicaid paperwork, it's beneficial for everybody to finish it up, said Jeffrey Oliver, who leads Connecting Kids to Coverage, a program of legal services of Eastern Missouri that helps families navigate the enrollment process. If people return the forms and are found to be ineligible, states pass along their information to online insurance exchanges such as healthcare.gov. The exchanges will follow up with people and share health plan options, functioning as another tap on the shoulder to prevent people from becoming uninsured. People shouldn't assume they can't afford marketplace plans, insurance experts say. Many can enroll in low-to-no-cost coverage. Roughly 2.7 million people are likely to be eligible for discounted plans, federal estimates show, representing about one-third of all those expected to be ineligible for Medicaid. 
of those, about 1.7 million will qualify for zero premium plans. Another reason to fill out the packet, even if adults in a household no longer qualify for Medicaid coverage or now have employer coverage, children may still be eligible for public plans. A message plastered on a billboard in Randolph County, Missouri, reminds people about Medicaid renewal in big, bold letters, don't miss this letter. About 34% of people living in the central Missouri County are covered by Medicaid, according to a tracker maintained by Washington University in St. Louis. If people throughout the country fail to turn in the renewal packet, they run the risk of falling through the cracks, said Adriana McIntyre, an assistant professor of health policy at Harvard. Being uninsured can lead people to postpone preventive care and cause them to end up in debilitating medical debt if emergencies happen. Most of the millions cut from Medicaid so far lost their benefits because they didn't complete the paperwork, not that they were deemed ineligible, according to KFF. And patient advocates worry enrollees may never have received the packet. Many recipients have likely moved and changed addresses but have not updated their contact information with states. Advocates fear those issues may be felt harder in places such as Louisiana, where many people have been displaced by floods and hurricanes in the past three years. In some states, Medicaid recipients can check their eligibility status online. Elsewhere, they can ask free navigators, such as Morrison, for help checking on their packets. What to know about navigating the path to insurance coverage? The most important step, fill out, sign, and return your Medicaid renewal packet. If you no longer qualify for Medicaid, that denial triggers a special enrollment period for you to find another source of coverage. You typically have 60 days before the loss of your Medicaid coverage to enroll in a new plan. The packets should arrive ahead of losing any coverage, so that should serve as a warning that a change in your benefits may be coming. You also have 60 days from when you report the loss of coverage, not the date when you actually lost it, to enroll in a new plan. That clock starts when you submit a new application via healthcare.gov, according to federal guidelines. To avoid gaps in coverage, plan ahead. Most marketplace coverage begins the first day of the following month. Here are potential coverage options for you and your family. Enroll in insurance through your job. Losing Medicaid triggers a special sign-up window for you to enroll in your employer's insurance, if available. Enroll in an Affordable Care Act plan. If employer-based coverage is not available or affordable, you and your family may be eligible for a discounted plan on the exchange. If your portion of the monthly premium for the lowest-cost family plan exceeds 9.12% of your household income, your family members would qualify for an exchange plan that offers financial assistance. Workplace insurance may be affordable for a father, for example, but not for the rest of the family. In that situation, Dad should enroll in the employer-sponsored insurance plan and then they should go to the marketplace for the rest of the family, said Jeffrey Oliver, a navigator who leads Connecting Kids to Coverage, a program of legal services of Eastern Missouri. Your kids may still be eligible for Medicaid even if you no longer qualify. Even if parents or guardians no longer qualify for Medicaid coverage, their children might. In some places, kids can qualify for the Children's Health Insurance Program, known as CHIP with an annual household income of up to 400% of the federal poverty level, which equates to an income of $120,000 for a family of four. What to do before you turn 19 and lose CHIP coverage? Some young adults will age out of CHIP coverage at age 19. For them, especially those with chronic health conditions, it's important to take advantage of the special enrollment period for an Affordable Care Act plan before losing public coverage. If you turn 19 in the middle of the month, say, September, you should choose an exchange plan in August because most marketplace coverage begins the first day of the following month. This ensures you will not experience a gap in coverage when CHIP coverage expires. KFF Health News, formerly known as Kaiser Health News, KHN, is a national newsroom that produces in-depth journalism about health issues and is one of the core operating programs at KFF, the independent source for health policy research, polling, and journalism. A Texas man has lost his hands and parts of his feet after contracting a severe case of typhus from a flea bite. Michael Kohlhoff, 35, began to show flu-like symptoms, including a fever and upset stomach, last month, according to his brother, Greg Kohlhoff. A week after the symptoms set in, Michael's condition worsened rapidly. Once he couldn't get out of bed in late June, Greg said, Michael went to the emergency department at a hospital in San Antonio. He went into septic shock soon after and was transferred to the intensive care unit. In the weeks since, Michael's toes, 
an inch of his feet and his hands up to his forearms have been amputated because of dry gangrene a consequence of sepsis that blocks blood flow to certain extremities. Michael, who works as a handyman and pet sitter, regained consciousness earlier this month after being sedated for nearly two weeks, his brother said. Since then, he has been in and out of procedures to patch up his amputations with skin grafts, though doctors are still monitoring to make sure dead tissue from the gangrene doesn't spread, Greg added. He's on the edge of not being able to keep his feet if things don't go well, Greg said. If they have to cut more feet off, they might have to just do a whole foot amputation for prosthetic purposes. Michael Kolhoff. Michael Kolhoff in the hospital after surgeries to patch up his amputations with skin grafts, courtesy Greg Kolhoff. Typhus is an infectious disease caused by bacteria that spread from fleas, lice, and chiggers. Symptoms typically include fever, chills and body aches. Flea-borne typhus in particular usually causes nausea, cough, stomach pain and a rash from the bite that arises around day 5 of the illness, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Fleas and lice transmit the bacteria that causes typhus when the bugs defecate upon biting and the excrement infects the wound. Though typhus is rare in the United States, it has been found in Southern California, Hawaii and Texas, according to the CDC. The agency does not report annual typhus data. However, a CDC report published Thursday showed an increase in typhus in Los Angeles County. The county saw 171 cases of flea-borne typhus in 2022, compared to 31 in 2010. Three people died of typhus in L.A. County last year, the report said, the first typhus deaths recorded in the U.S. since 1993. All three patients had underlying medical conditions. Texas, meanwhile, reported 591 cases in 2019, the most recent data available. True typhus case totals may be higher than reported because most are relatively mild, so many people don't seek tests or diagnoses, according to Dr. Jason Bowling, an infectious disease specialist at UT Health San Antonio, who was not involved with Michael's case. Since typhus symptoms are similar to many viral infections and some people don't develop a rash, he said, it can be difficult to determine which cases will become severe. Recommended. Health News. Don't rub castor oil in your eyes, doctors say, no matter what they do on social media. Abortion rights. Judge temporarily exempts women with complicated pregnancies from Texas abortion ban. However, Bowling added, if you were exposed to stray animals or flea bites and then weeks later, you're starting to have fever and chills, that might be something you seek health care for and make sure to mention that you've had contact. Michael Kolhoff's sister-in-law, Maria Virginia Kolhoff, said that when his early symptoms set in, he really thought he had a flu or something like that, so he was very stubborn to go initially to the hospital. Greg said the family is unsure when and where his brother was exposed. The incubation period for flea-borne typhus ranges from 7 to 14 days. After Michael was hospitalized, Greg said, it took almost a week to diagnose his typhus. They ended up throwing the kitchen sink at him, gave him all sorts of antibiotics, steroids, everything we could until they got the proper diagnosis, Greg said. Since typhus is rare, tests often have to get sent to a specialty lab, so results can take several days to come back, Bowling said. The Kohlhoff family created a GoFundMe to support Michael's treatment, since he doesn't have health insurance. Greg said his brother has been staying optimistic. His spirits are something to be admired, he said. He seems to try to keep a positive attitude, keeping himself distracted, I think he's grabbed onto the notion that he survived death. What is Benadryl? Benadryl, diphenhydramine, is a brand name medication that's classified as an antihistamine. It's used to help relieve symptoms of hay fever, seasonal allergies, other allergies, and the common cold, as well as itchy skin due to insect bites, hives, and other causes. Benadryl is effective for decreasing itchy skin from hives. It's often considered a first-choice treatment for hives. Although it's effective for decreasing symptoms of seasonal allergies, Benadryl isn't often used for this purpose. This is due to side effects such as sleepiness. Benadryl comes in many different forms and is available by prescription and over-the-counter. Some are oral and some are topical. Examples include oral tablets, oral liquid-filled capsules, leaky gels, oral chewable tablets, oral liquid solution. Topical cream. Topical gel. Topical spray. Topical stick. Benadryl dosage. Your Benadryl dosage will depend on several factors. These include. The type of condition you're using Benadryl to treat. Your age. The form of Benadryl you're taking. 
Typically, you should use the smallest dosage that provides the desired effect. The following information describes the most commonly used or recommended dosages. If you're unsure what dosage to take, ask your doctor or pharmacist. Dosage for hay fever or allergies. Typical dosage for adults, 25 to 50 mg, mg, every 4 to 6 hours. Dosage for symptoms of the common cold, such as runny nose or sneezing. Typical dosage for adults, 25 to 50 mg, every 4 to 6 hours. Dosage for pain and itchy skin from hives, insect bites, and other causes. Typical dosage for adults, an application of Benadryl cream, gel, or spray to the affected area up to 3 to 4 times daily. Children's dosage. For hay fever or allergies. Children ages 12 years and older, 25 to 50 mg, every 4 to 6 hours. Children 6 to 11 years, 12.5 to 25 mg, every 4 to 6 hours. Children under 6 years, use only under the direction of a doctor. For symptoms of the common cold, such as runny nose or sneezing. Children ages 12 years and older, 25 to 50 mg, every 4 to 6 hours. Children 6 to 11 years, 12.5 to 25 mg, every 4 to 6 hours. Children under 6 years, use only under the direction of a doctor. For pain and itchy skin from hives, insect bites, and other causes. Children ages 2 years and older, apply Benadryl cream, gel, or spray to the affected area up to 3 to 4 times daily. Children under 2 years, use only under the direction of a doctor. Dosage for babies. Over-the-counter oral Benadryl products aren't approved for use in children under 6 years. Topical Benadryl products that aren't approved for use in children under 2 years. Before giving Benadryl to a baby, talk with your doctor. Your doctor may want to evaluate the baby's symptoms. Your doctor can also recommend the most appropriate dosage of Benadryl to treat a baby if necessary. See warning below in the Benadryl side effects section. Maximum dosage. Oral Benadryl products should not be taken more than 6 times each day. For adults and children over 12 years of age, the maximum dosage is 300 mg each day. For children ages 6 to 12 years, the maximum is 150 mg each day. Adults or children should not apply Benadryl products, such as the cream, gel, and spray, to their skin more than 4 times per day. Tolerance. Your body can develop a tolerance to some of the effects of Benadryl. This means your body's response to the drug may decrease over time. For instance, one study found that Benadryl caused sleepiness on the first day people took it. However, after they took Benadryl for four days, this side effect no longer occurred. This was due to tolerance. Although tolerance to sleepiness caused by Benadryl can happen, tolerance doesn't seem to develop for other effects of Benadryl. When used over time, Benadryl continues to work to relieve symptoms of hay fever or allergies, runny nose, hives, and other conditions. However, if you're taking Benadryl frequently, on more than about 4 days per week, talk with your doctor. They may suggest other treatment options that may be more effective for you. Benadryl Side Effects Benadryl can cause mild or serious side effects. The following list contains some of the key side effects that may occur while taking Benadryl. This list doesn't include all possible side effects. For more information on the possible side effects of Benadryl or tips on how to deal with a troubling side effect, talk with your doctor or pharmacist. More common side effects. The more common side effects of Benadryl include sleepiness, dry mouth, weakness, dizziness, headache. Some of these side effects may go away within a few days or a couple of weeks. If they're more severe or don't go away, talk to your doctor or pharmacist. Serious side effects. Call your doctor right away if you have serious side effects. Call 911 if your symptoms feel life-threatening or if you think you're having a medical emergency. Serious side effects and their symptoms can include the following. Decreased memory. Impaired thinking. Dementia. Confusion. Fast heartbeat. Seizures. Long-term side effects. Over-the-counter Benadryl is approved for temporary or short-term use and is not intended for long-term use. There is very little scientific research about the long-term effects of Benadryl. Some side effects that may occur with long-term use include constipation, blurred vision, memory problems and dementia, especially in older adults, anxiety, dependence. Talk to your doctor about how often you have allergy symptoms. If you have symptoms frequently, more often than about four days per week, there may be a safer, more effective medication for you than Benadryl. Dementia. 
Benadryl and some other antihistamine drugs can sometimes cause decreased memory, confusion, and trouble thinking. These side effects are more common in older adults. In addition, taking Benadryl long-term might increase the risk of dementia such as Alzheimer's disease, especially in older adults. In one study trusted source, people over the age of 65 years who took medications such as Benadryl daily for three years or longer had an increased risk of dementia or Alzheimer's disease. To prevent this possible side effect, you should use the lowest effective dose of Benadryl for the shortest time possible. If you need to take an antihistamine long-term, talk with your doctor or pharmacist about other options. Hallucinations. Hallucinations aren't a typical side effect of Benadryl. However, they can occur in people who take very high doses of Benadryl. If you experience hallucinations while taking Benadryl, don't take any more of the medication. If you think you need medical treatment, call your doctor or 911. Restless leg syndrome. Some antihistamines, including Benadryl, can worsen symptoms of restless leg syndrome. If you have restless leg syndrome, talk with your doctor or pharmacist about other medication options. Depression. Depression isn't a side effect that typically happens in people who take Benadryl. If you have symptoms of depression while taking Benadryl, talk with your doctor. Your doctor may want to evaluate your symptoms. They may also recommend different medication options. Weight gain. Weight gain can happen in some people who take diphenhydramine, the drug that Benadryl contains. If you have weight gain while taking Benadryl, talk with your doctor or pharmacist about other medication options. Constipation. Benadryl can cause constipation, especially if you use it regularly. If you have constipation, talk with your doctor or pharmacist about other medication options instead of Benadryl. Driving warning. Because it can make you very sleepy, Benadryl can impair your ability to drive. If you feel sleepy after taking it, don't drive. Also, don't use dangerous equipment if you feel sleepy after taking Benadryl. Side effects in children. Side effects of Benadryl in children are generally similar to those in adults, described above. However, in children, oral Benadryl can sometimes cause unexpected side effects such as restlessness, irritability or agitation, trouble sleeping, muscle spasms, seizure. In newborns, oral Benadryl can cause trouble breathing, seizures, sudden infant death. Because of the risk of dangerous side effects in children, over-the-counter oral Benadryl products are only approved for use in children 6 years of age and older. Benadryl uses. Benadryl is an over-the-counter antihistamine that's used to help relieve symptoms of hay fever, other allergies, and the common cold, as well as itchy skin caused by insect bites, hives, and other causes. Some of Benadryl's common uses are described below. Not all of these uses are recommended by the FDA or by medical experts. Benadryl for allergies. Benadryl is an approved over-the-counter treatment of symptoms of hay fever and other respiratory allergies such as sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes, itchy nose and throat. Benadryl effectively reduces symptoms of allergies. However, it's not usually a first-choice treatment for treating hay fever or other respiratory allergies. This is because of the risk of side effects such as sleepiness. Newer, second-generation antihistamines are usually preferred over Benadryl for treating these conditions. These medications include cetirizine, Zyrtec, Desilratidine, Clarinex, Fexofenadine, Allegra, Levacetirazine, Zizel, Loratidine, Claritin. To learn more about allergies, you can refer to our Asthma and Allergies Hub. Benadryl for Sleep over-the-counter Benadryl products aren't approved for helping to improve sleep. However, diphenhydramine, the main ingredient contained in most Benadryl products, is contained in other products that help improve sleep. These products include Unisom, Somonex, ZZZ Quill. These products are approved for occasional use to help relieve sleeplessness. According to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine Trusted Source, these products aren't recommended to treat ongoing or long-term insomnia. Benadryl for hives, itching, and rash. Some topical, over-the-counter Benadryl products are approved for treating hives, itchy skin, and rash. These products include Benadryl itch stopping cream, Benadryl itch cooling spray, Benadryl itch stopping gel, Benadryl itch relief stick. Oral over-the-counter Benadryl products aren't approved to treat hives, itchy skin, and rash. However, sometimes, people use these products for these purposes. They're effective for this use but they're not usually a first-choice treatment because of side effects such as sleepiness. 
newer, second-generation antihistamines are usually preferred over oral Benadryl for treating these symptoms. These newer medications include cetirizine, Zyrtec, Desloratadine, Clarinex, Fexofenadine, Allegra, Levacetirazine, Zizel, Loratadine, Claritin, Benadryl for anxiety. Benadryl is not meant to be used for treating anxiety. It can make you feel sleepy, which might temporarily make you feel less anxious. However, this effect will wear off after a few days of using the product. If you have symptoms of anxiety, talk with your doctor about medications that are a better choice for treating your symptoms. Benadryl for poison ivy. Some topical, over-the-counter Benadryl products are approved for treating pain and itchy skin caused by poison ivy. These products include Benadryl itch stopping cream, Benadryl itch cooling spray, Benadryl itch stopping gel, Benadryl itch relief stick, Benadryl for nausea or motion sickness. Over-the-counter Benadryl products aren't approved to treat symptoms of motion sickness. However, people often use Benadryl to treat these symptoms. Benadryl is often effective in reducing symptoms of motion sickness, but it can cause sleepiness. Other medications are considered a first-choice treatment for people who need to relieve motion sickness but want to stay awake while traveling. If you get symptoms of motion sickness, talk with your doctor about treatment options before you travel. Benadryl for bee stings and bug bites. Some topical, over-the-counter Benadryl products are approved for treating pain and itchy skin caused by insect bites and stings. These products include Benadryl itch stopping cream, Benadryl itch cooling spray, Benadryl itch stopping gel, Benadryl itch relief stick, Benadryl for cough. Oral, over-the-counter Benadryl products are approved to treat some symptoms of the common cold. These symptoms include sneezing and runny nose, but they don't include cough. Although some people take Benadryl to treat cough, an analysis of clinical studies shows that antihistamines such as Benadryl don't improve symptoms of cough. Benadryl for migraine. Over-the-counter Benadryl isn't approved to treat migraine headaches. Diphenhydramine, the drug that Benadryl contains, is sometimes used with other medications for treating migraine headaches. However, it may not help improve symptoms. The American Headache Society trusted source recommends not using diphenhydramine for treating migraine headaches. Benadryl for colds. Oral over-the-counter Benadryl products are approved to treat some symptoms of the common cold, including sneezing and runny nose. An analysis of clinical research found that antihistamines such as Benadryl can slightly decrease these symptoms in adults. However, there isn't enough research to know if Benadryl reduces these symptoms in children. Benadryl for eczema. Over-the-counter Benadryl products aren't approved to treat symptoms of eczema. The American Academy of Dermatology recommends not using Benadryl products to treat eczema. This includes Benadryl products that are oral and topical. Benadryl for heat rash. Over-the-counter Benadryl products aren't approved and do not work to treat heat rash. Heat rash usually goes away on its own without treatment. If you have symptoms that don't go away, call your doctor. They may recommend treatments such as calamine lotion. Benadryl for sinus pain. Over-the-counter Benadryl products aren't approved to treat sinus pain. However, some oral Benadryl products contain diphenhydramine, an antihistamine, and a decongestant called phenylephrine. These products can help reduce nasal congestion and stuffiness and may also help reduce sinus pressure or pain. These products include Benadryl allergy plus congestion, children's allergy plus congestion, Benadryl for swelling. The swelling that often occurs along with hives is called angioedema. It usually occurs on the hands or feet or around the lips and face. Diphenhydramine, the drug that Benadryl contains, may be suitable for more severe cases of swelling. As an example, painful swelling could be considered severe. Because Benadryl can cause sleepiness, it's not typically recommended for less severe swelling. For this symptom, newer second-generation antihistamines are usually preferable to oral Benadryl. These medications include cetirizine, Zyrtec, Desloratadine, Clarinex, Fexofenadine, Allegra, Levacetirazine, Zizel, Loratadine, Claritin. Note, in rare cases, swelling from hives may cause a swollen tongue or throat and may make it difficult to breathe. If you have these symptoms, call 911 or go to an emergency room for treatment. Benadryl for sunburn. Some topical over-the-counter Benadryl products are approved for treating pain and itchy skin caused by sunburn. These products include Benadryl itch stopping cream. Benadryl itch cooling spray. Benadryl itch stopping gel. Benadryl itch relief stick. Benadryl generic. 
Benadryl is available in generic forms, which are often store brand products. The generic name of Benadryl is diphenhydramine, Benadryl active ingredient. There are many different Benadryl branded products. Some of these products contain just one ingredient, while others contain two ingredients. Examples of different Benadryl products and their ingredients include Benadryl allergy. This product contains one active ingredient, diphenhydramine, which is an antihistamine. Benadryl allergy plus congestion. This product contains two active ingredients, diphenhydramine and antihistamine. Phenylephrine, a decongestant. Benadryl itch stopping cream. This product contains two active ingredients, diphenhydramine and antihistamine. Zinc, a skin protectant. Benadryl itch cooling gel. This product doesn't contain the usual antihistamine, diphenhydramine. It only contains camphor, which is a type of pain reliever that's applied to the skin. When people say Benadryl, they usually mean the products containing diphenhydramine. Because ingredients vary from one Benadryl product to another, be sure to read the label closely before buying or using a Benadryl product. That way you'll know what ingredients it contains. If you're not sure which product is right for you, ask your doctor or pharmacist. Warning about Benadryl use in children and babies. The Food and Drug Administration, FDA, recommends trusted source that cough and cold products not be used in children under 2 years of age due to the risk of dangerous side effects, including sudden infant death trusted source. These products often contain diphenhydramine, an ingredient in Benadryl, or other antihistamines combined with other ingredients. Before giving oral Benadryl to children under 6 years, or cough and cold products to children under 2 years, talk with your doctor. Your doctor may want to evaluate your child's symptoms. They can also recommend the most appropriate medication and dosage if treatment is needed. Benadryl for babies. Benadryl products aren't approved for use in babies, see warning above. Over-the-counter oral Benadryl products are only approved for use in children ages 6 years and older. Benadryl products that you apply to the skin, such as the cream, gel, or spray, are only approved for use in children 2 years of age and older. Using Benadryl in babies can increase the risk of serious side effects such as restlessness, irritability or agitation, trouble sleeping, muscle spasms, trouble breathing, seizures, sudden infant death. Before giving Benadryl to your baby, talk with your doctor. Your doctor may want to evaluate your baby's symptoms. If they decide that the baby requires treatment with Benadryl, your doctor can also recommend the most appropriate dosage. Benadryl overdose. Taking too much Benadryl can increase your risk of side effects. Do not use more Benadryl than your recommended dosage. For information about Benadryl's recommended dosages, see the Benadryl dosage section above. Overdose symptoms. Symptoms of an overdose in adults and children can include involuntary movements, blurred vision, decreased sweating, restlessness, nervousness and anxiety, confusion, hallucinations, heart arrhythmia, trouble breathing, seizure, coma, death. What to do in case of overdose? If you think you've taken too much of this drug, call your doctor or seek guidance from America's Poison Centers at 800-222-1222 or through its online tool. However, if your symptoms are severe, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room right away. Benadryl Forms Over-the-counter Benadryl is available in many different forms. Some are oral and others are topical. Forms include Oral tablets Oral chewable tablets Oral liquid-filled capsules, leaky gels Oral liquid solution Topical cream Topical gel Topical spray Topical stick Store brands that contain diphenhydramine, the same ingredient in Benadryl, are available in other forms. These forms include oral capsules, oral tablets, orally disintegrating tablets, rapid melt tablets, oral dissolving strips, oral suspension, lip balm, prescription diphenhydramine, the ingredient in Benadryl, is also available as a solution for injection. No Benadryl or diphenhydramine product is available as a topical lotion or as eye drops. Benadryl and pregnancy. Benadryl may be safe for short-term use during pregnancy in some situations. For treatment of severe allergic reactions during pregnancy, injected diphenhydramine is often considered the first-choice treatment. Diphenhydramine is an ingredient that Benadryl contains. You should not use Benadryl during the last two weeks of pregnancy. This is due to a risk of eye disease in the newborn. If you're pregnant, talk with your doctor before taking Benadryl. 
your doctor may want to evaluate your symptoms to determine the safest treatment. Benadryl and breastfeeding. Taking Benadryl occasionally during breastfeeding is likely safe. However, taking Benadryl regularly or in large doses may cause side effects in a child who is breastfed. It may also reduce your milk supply. Antihistamines that cause less sleepiness are usually preferred over oral Benadryl while breastfeeding. These medications include Cetirizine, Zyrtec, Desloratadine, Clarinex, Fexofenadine, Allegra, Levacetirazine, Zizel, Loratadine, Claritin. Alternatives to Benadryl. Benadryl is an antihistamine. There are several other antihistamines that you can use as alternatives. Antihistamines are typically classified as either first generation or second generation. First generation antihistamines usually cause more sleepiness and other side effects than second generation antihistamines. Benadryl contains diphenhydramine, a first generation antihistamine. Examples of the other medications in these groups are listed below. First generation antihistamines include bromphenyramine, chlorphenyramine, chlortrimtin, dimenhydrinate, dramamine, hydroxyzine, visterol. Second generation antihistamines include Cetirizine, Zyrtec, Desloratadine, Clarinex, Fexofenadine, Allegra, Levacetirazine, Zizel, Loratadine, Claritin, Benadryl versus other drugs. You may wonder how Benadryl compares to other medications prescribed for similar uses. Below are comparisons between Benadryl and several medications. Benadryl versus Claritin. Benadryl is a first generation antihistamine. Claritin, loratadine, is a newer, second-generation antihistamine. Second-generation antihistamines are often called non-sedating antihistamines because they're less likely to cause sleepiness than first-generation antihistamines. Both Benadryl and Claritin are over-the-counter medications. Uses. Oral Benadryl products are approved for decreasing symptoms of hay fever and other respiratory allergies, and symptoms of the common cold, such as sneezing and runny nose. Topical Benadryl products are approved for decreasing pain and itchy skin resulting from hives, insect bites, and other causes. Claritin is approved for decreasing symptoms of hay fever and other respiratory allergies. Drug forms. Benadryl comes in many different forms, including oral tablets, oral liquid-filled capsules, leaky gels, oral chewable tablets, oral liquid solution, topical cream, topical gel, topical spray. Topical stick. Oral Benadryl products are usually taken every 4 to 6 hours. Topical products are typically used up to 4 times daily. Claritin is also available in many different forms, including oral tablets, orally disintegrating tablets, oral liquid filled capsules, leaky gels, oral liquid syrup. Claritin tablets, liquid filled capsules, and syrup are taken once daily. The orally disintegrating tablets are used either once daily or twice daily. Side effects and risks. Benadryl and Claritin have some similar side effects, and some that differ. Below are examples of these side effects. Both Benadryl and Claritin Benadryl Claritin. More common side effects headache. Dry mouth. Sleepiness asterisk weakness. Dizziness fatigue. Inflammation of the mouth and lips. Rash. Sore throat. Ear pain. Serious side effects seizures. Fast heartbeat decreased memory. Impaired thinking. Confusion. Impaired driving. Dementia. Asterisk both Benadryl and Claritin can cause sleepiness, but it's much more common in people who take Benadryl. Effectiveness. Benadryl and Claritin are both effective for reducing symptoms of hay fever and other allergies, and for treating hives or itchy skin. However, Benadryl isn't usually a first-choice treatment for these conditions due to its risk of side effects such as sleepiness. Claritin and other second-generation antihistamines are usually preferred. Costs. Benadryl and Claritin are both brand-name, over-the-counter products. Claritin usually costs more than Benadryl. Both of these products have store-brand versions. Store brands are usually cheaper than the brand-name versions. Benadryl vs. Zyrtec. Benadryl is a first-generation antihistamine. Zyrtec, cetirizine, is a newer, second-generation antihistamine. Second-generation antihistamines are often called non-sedating antihistamines because they're less likely to cause sleepiness than first-generation antihistamines. Both Benadryl and Zyrtec are over-the-counter medications. Uses. Oral Benadryl products are approved for decreasing symptoms of hay fever and other respiratory allergies, 
and symptoms of the common cold, such as sneezing and runny nose. Topical Benadryl products are approved for decreasing pain and itchy skin due to hives, insect bites, and other causes. Zyrtec is approved for decreasing symptoms of hay fever and other respiratory allergies. Drug Forms Benadryl is available in many different forms, including oral tablets, oral liquid-filled capsules, leaky gels, oral chewable tablets, oral liquid solution, topical cream, topical gel, topical spray, topical stick. Oral Benadryl products are usually taken every 4 to 6 hours. Topical Benadryl products are typically used up to 4 times daily. Zyrtec is also available in many different forms, including oral tablets, orally disintegrating tablets, dissolved tabs, oral liquid gels, oral liquid syrup. Zyrtec products are usually taken once daily. Side effects and risks. Benadryl and Zyrtec have some similar side effects, and some that differ. Below are examples of these side effects. Both Benadryl and Zyrtec Benadryl Zyrtec. More common side effects headache, dry mouth, sleepiness asterisk weakness, dizziness fatigue, sore throat, stomach pain, serious side effects seizures, fast heartbeat decreased memory, impaired thinking, confusion, impaired driving, dementia glaucoma, an eye condition, bronchospasm, wheezing or trouble breathing that gets worse. Asterisk both Benadryl and Zyrtec can cause sleepiness, but it's more common in people who take Benadryl. Effectiveness. Benadryl and Zyrtec are both effective for reducing symptoms of hay fever and other allergies, and for treating hives or itchy skin. However, Benadryl isn't usually a first choice for these conditions because of its risk of side effects such as sleepiness. Zyrtec and other second-generation antihistamines are usually preferred. Costs. Benadryl and Zyrtec are both brand-name over-the-counter products. Zyrtec usually costs more than Benadryl. Both of these products have store-brand versions. Store brands are usually cheaper than the brand-name versions. Benadryl vs. Allegra. Benadryl is a first-generation antihistamine. Allegra, fexofenadine, is a newer, second-generation antihistamine. Second-generation antihistamines are often called non-sedating antihistamines because they're less likely to cause sleepiness than first-generation antihistamines. Both Benadryl and Allegra are over-the-counter medications. Uses. Oral Benadryl products are approved for decreasing symptoms of hay fever and other respiratory allergies, and symptoms of the common cold, such as sneezing and runny nose. Topical Benadryl products are approved for decreasing pain and itchy skin due to hives, insect bites, and other causes. Allegra is approved for decreasing symptoms of hay fever and other respiratory allergies, and itchy skin caused by hives, insect bites, and other causes. Drug Forms Benadryl is available in many different forms, including oral tablets, oral liquid-filled capsules, leaky gels, oral chewable tablets, oral liquid solution, topical cream, topical gel, topical spray, topical stick. Oral Benadryl products are usually taken every 4 to 6 hours. Topical Benadryl products are typically used up to 4 times daily. Allegra is also available in many different forms, including oral tablets, orally disintegrating tablets, meltable tablets, oral gel-coated tablets, gel caps, oral liquid suspension. Allegra products are taken once or twice daily. Side effects and risks. Benadryl and Allegra have some similar side effects, and some that differ. Below are examples of these side effects. Both Benadryl and Allegra Benadryl Allegra. More common side effects headache. Dizziness weakness. Dry mouth. Sleepiness vomiting. Cough. Diarrhea. Stomach upset. Fatigue. Muscle pain. Sore throat. Serious side effects decreased memory. Impaired thinking. Confusion. Impaired driving. Seizures. Fast heartbeat. Dementia angioedema, swelling. Effectiveness. Benadryl and Allegra are both effective for reducing symptoms of hay fever and other allergies and for treating hives or itchy skin. However, Benadryl isn't usually a first choice for these conditions because of the risk of side effects such as sleepiness. Allegra and other second-generation antihistamines are usually preferred. Costs. Benadryl and Allegra are both brand-name, over-the-counter products. Allegra usually costs more than Benadryl. Both of these products have store-brand versions. Store brands are usually cheaper than the brand-name versions. Benadryl vs. Unisom. 
Benadryl contains the ingredient diphenhydramine, a first-generation antihistamine. There are different forms of Unisom. Most of these also contain the ingredient diphenhydramine. However, one Unisom product contains a similar drug, doxylamine. Uses. Oral Benadryl products are approved for decreasing symptoms of hay fever and other respiratory allergies, and symptoms of the common cold, such as sneezing and runny nose. Topical Benadryl products are approved for decreasing pain and itchy skin due to hives, insect bites, and other causes. Although it's not approved for this purpose, some people take Benadryl to help improve their sleep. Unisom is approved for helping relieve occasional sleeplessness. It's not intended to be used to treat ongoing or long-term insomnia. Drug forms. Benadryl is available in many different forms, including oral tablets, oral liquid-filled capsules, leaky gels, oral chewable tablets, oral liquid solution, topical cream, topical gel, topical spray, topical stick. Oral Benadryl products are usually taken every four to six hours. Topical Benadryl products are typically used up to four times daily. Oral Benadryl products are not approved for sleeplessness, but some people take Oral Benadryl once before bedtime for that purpose. There are also several forms of Unisom products. These include Diphenhydramine-containing products Oral soft gels, sleep gels Oral mini capsules, sleep minis Oral liquid Orally disintegrating tablets, sleep melts Doxylamine-contained product Oral tablets, sleep tabs. These products are usually taken once daily, just before bedtime or at bedtime. Side effects and risks. Benadryl and most Unisom products contain the same ingredient, diphenhydramine. One form of Unisom contains a different ingredient, doxylamine. Doxylamine is very similar to diphenhydramine and causes very similar common and serious side effects. The most common side effects of Benadryl and Unisom include headache. Dizziness, weakness, dry mouth, sleepiness. Some serious side effects can include decreased memory, impaired thinking, confusion, impaired driving, seizures, fast heartbeat, dementia, effectiveness. Benadryl and most forms of Unisom contain the same active ingredient, diphenhydramine. Both products can help people with occasional sleeplessness to fall asleep. This effect may decrease or wear off with continued use. According to a 2008 clinical guideline trusted source, these products are not recommended to treat ongoing or long-term insomnia. Costs. Benadryl and Unisom are both brand name over-the-counter products. These products usually cost about the same. Both of these products have store brand versions. Store brands are usually cheaper than the brand name versions. Benadryl vs. Melatonin. Benadryl contains the ingredient diphenhydramine, a first-generation antihistamine. Melatonin is a hormone that naturally occurs in the body. It's involved in regulating the wake-sleep cycle of the body. It's available as a dietary supplement. Uses. Oral Benadryl products are approved for decreasing symptoms of hay fever and other respiratory allergies, and symptoms of the common cold, such as sneezing and runny nose. Topical Benadryl products are approved for decreasing pain and itchy skin due to hives, insect bites, and other causes. Although it's not approved, some people take oral Benadryl to help improve their sleep. Melatonin is most commonly used to help relieve sleeplessness. Drug forms. Benadryl is available in many different forms, including oral tablets, oral liquid-filled capsules, leaky gels, oral chewable tablets, oral liquid solution, topical cream, topical gel, topical spray, topical stick. Oral Benadryl products are usually taken every 4 to 6 hours. Topical Benadryl products are typically used up to 4 times daily. Oral Benadryl products aren't approved for sleeplessness, but some people take Oral Benadryl once before bedtime for that purpose. Melatonin is also available in different forms, including Oral tablets Oral gummies Orally dissolving tablets Fast dissolving tablets Oral capsules Oral chewable tablets Oral liquid Melatonin is usually taken once daily at bedtime. Side effects and risks. Benadryl and melatonin have some similar side effects, and some that differ. Below are examples of these side effects. Both Benadryl and melatonin Benadryl melatonin. More common side effects headache. Sleepiness weakness. Dry mouth. Dizziness stomach upset. Serious side effects seizures. Impaired thinking. Confusion. Fast or irregular heartbeat decreased memory. Impaired driving. 
Dementia angioedema, swelling, effectiveness. Benadryl can help people with occasional sleeplessness to fall asleep. However, this effect may decrease or wear off with continued use of the product. A 2013 meta-analysis trusted source of clinical studies found that melatonin slightly decreases the time it takes to fall asleep and increases total sleep time. These effects don't decrease with continued use of the product. According to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine trusted source, neither Benadryl nor melatonin is recommended to treat ongoing or long-term insomnia. Costs Melatonin usually costs more than Benadryl. Both of these products have store brand versions. Store brands are usually cheaper than the brand name versions. Benadryl and alcohol. If you drink alcohol, you should not consume it while taking Benadryl. Drinking alcohol with Benadryl can increase the effects of alcohol and cause excess sleepiness that can impair your abilities. For instance, you may have trouble driving. Benadryl interactions. Benadryl can interact with several other medications. It can also interact with certain supplements. In addition to the information below, you can also refer to this article for details about Benadryl's interactions. Benadryl and other medications. Below is a list of medications that can interact with Benadryl. This list doesn't contain all drugs that may interact with Benadryl. Different drug interactions can cause different effects. For instance, some can interfere with how well a drug works, while others can cause increased side effects. If you take other medications, talk with your pharmacist before taking Benadryl. Your pharmacist can help you avoid potential interactions. Anticholinergic drugs. Anticholinergic drugs block the action of acetylcholine, a chemical that relays messages between cells in your body. Benadryl also blocks acetylcholine. Because anticholinergic drugs and Benadryl work in the same way, taking them together can increase the risk of side effects. Examples of these drugs include Fisoteridine, Toviaz, Oxybutanin, Gelnik, Ditropan XL, Oxitrol, Scopolamine, Transderm Scop, Tolteridine, Detrol. Medications that cause sleepiness. Many medications can cause sleepiness. Taking these drugs with Benadryl can increase the risk of excessive sleepiness. Examples of these medications include antihistamines, such as bromphenyramine, chlorphenyramine, chlortrimpton, doxylamine, unisom, dimenhydrinate, dramamine, hydroxyzine, visterol, antidepressant drugs, such as citalopram, selexa, acetylopram, lexapro, fluoxetine, prozac, seraphim. Paroxetine, Paxil, Sertraline, Zoloft, Amitriptyline, Desipramine, Norpramine, Doxepin, Imipramine, Tofranil, Nortriptyline, Pamelor. Antipsychotic drugs, such as Haloperidol, Haldol, Olanzapine, Zyprexa, Quetiapine, Seroquel, Risperidone, Risperdal, Benzodiazepines, such as Alprazolam, Xanax, Clonazepam, Clonopin, diazepam, valium, lorazepam, adivin, opioids, such as codeine, hydrocodone, hisingla ER, zohydro ER, oxycodone, oxycontin, roxicodone, tramadol, conzip, ultram, sedative hypnotic drugs, such as romeltian, rosarum, zaleplon, sonata, zalpidum, ambien, benadryl, and xanax. Xanax, alprazolam, is a type of drug called a benzodiazepine, which can cause sleepiness. Taking Xanax with Benadryl can increase your risk of excessive sleepiness. This can make you too sleepy to drive or prevent you from doing other potentially dangerous activities safely. If you take Xanax, talk with your doctor before taking Benadryl. They may recommend other treatment options. Benadryl and Zoloft. Zoloft, sertraline, is an antidepressant that can cause sleepiness in some people who take it. Taking Zoloft with Benadryl may increase the risk of excessive sleepiness. This can make you too sleepy to drive or prevent you from doing other potentially dangerous activities safely. If you take Zoloft, talk with your doctor before taking Benadryl. They may recommend other treatment options. Benadryl and Zyrtec. Zyrtec, cetirizine, is an antihistamine. Benadryl is also an antihistamine. Taking Benadryl with Zyrtec may increase the risk of certain side effects such as sleepiness, dry mouth, fatigue, and headache. If you take Zyrtec, talk with your doctor before taking Benadryl. They may recommend other treatment options. Benadryl and Motrin. There are no known interactions between Benadryl and Motrin, ibuprofen, Benadryl and acetaminophen. 
There are no known interactions between Benadryl and acetaminophen, Tylenol. Benadryl and herbs and supplements. Some herbs and supplements can cause sleepiness. Taking these with Benadryl can increase the risk of excessive sleepiness. Examples of these supplements include chamomile, kava, melatonin, valerian, Benadryl price. As with all medications, the costs of Benadryl products can vary. How to take Benadryl. Take or apply Benadryl according to the instructions on the package or according to the directions you've received from your doctor. Timing. For hay fever or other respiratory allergies, you typically take oral Benadryl every 4 to 6 hours. If you use topical Benadryl to treat itchy skin, you will apply it up to 4 times daily. You should separate each application by 4 to 6 hours. Taking Benadryl with food. You can take Benadryl with or without food. Can Benadryl be crushed? You can crush Benadryl tablets. If you have trouble swallowing whole tablets, Benadryl liquid solution and chewable tablets are available. How Benadryl works. Benadryl is an antihistamine. If you have allergies or have a cold, your body releases a chemical messenger called histamine. This messenger causes symptoms such as inflammation, edema, swelling, itchiness, and runny nose. Benadryl blocks some of the effects of histamine and decreases some of the symptoms it causes. How long does it take to work? When you take Benadryl by mouth, it begins to work within 15 to 30 minutes. When you apply it to your skin, it works right away. Common questions about Benadryl. Here are answers to some frequently asked questions about Benadryl. Does Benadryl make you sleepy? Are there non-drowsy forms of Benadryl? Benadryl causes most people who take it to feel sleepy. This side effect may go away after 3 to 4 days of daily use. Currently, there aren't any non-drowsy forms of Benadryl available. Drowsiness can be a side effect of all forms of Benadryl. However, other antihistamine drugs, such as fexofenadine, Allegra, and levacetirazine, Zizel, may come in non-drowsy forms. Keep in mind that non-drowsy drugs are less likely to cause drowsiness, but this can still be a side effect. You can ask your pharmacist or doctor to recommend non-drowsy alternatives to Benadryl. Can Benadryl help with anxiety? Benadryl isn't an effective treatment for anxiety. Since Benadryl can cause sleepiness, some people may feel that it causes them to relax. However, this effect often goes away after using the product for a few days. Is Benadryl an NSAID? No, Benadryl isn't an NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Benadryl is an antihistamine. Can Benadryl be used as an expectorant? No, Benadryl doesn't work as an expectorant. An expectorant is a product that loosens mucus in your respiratory tract so you can cough it up. Is Benadryl used for dogs? Benadryl is not approved for use in dogs. In some cases, a veterinarian might recommend giving Benadryl to your dog to treat allergies. However, it's important to talk with a veterinarian before using any medication for your dog. They can recommend whether Benadryl is safe for your dog and what dosage to use. Benadryl precautions. Before taking Benadryl, talk with your doctor about any medical conditions you have. Benadryl may not be a good choice for you if you have certain medical conditions. Examples of these conditions include asthma. Taking Benadryl can sometimes cause thickening of mucus in the trachea, windpipe. This might worsen asthma attacks. Bladder or prostate problems. Benadryl can worsen symptoms of urinary retention in people with bladder or prostate problems. Dementia. Benadryl can cause memory problems and can worsen symptoms of dementia. People with dementia should avoid taking Benadryl. Glaucoma. Benadryl can worsen symptoms of glaucoma. People with glaucoma should avoid taking Benadryl. Heart problems or high blood pressure. Although not common, Benadryl can sometimes cause heart-related side effects such as a fast heartbeat or low blood pressure. These effects can worsen certain heart conditions. Liver disease. The body breaks down Benadryl in the liver. People with liver disease may not be able to process Benadryl properly, leaving an increased amount of the drug in their body. This can lead to a higher risk of side effects from Benadryl. If you have liver disease, you may need a lower dosage of Benadryl. Other warnings apply to certain groups. For people who wear contact lenses, Benadryl can cause dry eyes. This may cause problems for people who wear contact lenses. For older adults, older adults have a higher risk of side effects from Benadryl, especially when they use it long term. Second generation antihistamines may be a better choice for older adults. Benadryl expiration. The manufacturer of Benadryl gives each package of Benadryl an expiration date. The purpose of the expiration date is to guarantee the effectiveness of the medication during this time. 
The current stance trusted source of the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, is to avoid using expired medications. If you have a used medication that has gone past the expiration date, talk with your pharmacist about how to properly dispose of it. Storage. How long a medication remains good to use can depend on many factors, including how and where you store the medication. Store Benadryl at room temperature in its original container. Avoid storing Benadryl in areas of excessive humidity. Disposal. If you no longer need to take Benadryl and have leftover medication, it's important to dispose of it safely. This helps prevent others, including children and pets, from taking the drug by accident. It also helps keep the drug from harming the environment. This article provides several useful tips on medication disposal. You can also ask your pharmacist for information about how to dispose of your medication. Professional information for Benadryl. The following information is provided for clinicians and other healthcare professionals. Mechanism of action. Benadryl is an H1 receptor antagonist. It competes with free histamine at the H1 receptor binding sites. Benadryl's antiemetic effects are likely due to central anticholinergic effects. Benadryl also has central nervous system depressant effects and has a direct suppressive effect on the cough center. Pharmacokinetics and metabolism. After oral administration, the onset of action is approximately 15 to 30 minutes. Peak concentrations occur in 2 to 4 hours. Benadryl is metabolized hepatically. The plasma half-life is 2 to 8 hours with a duration of action of about 4 to 6 hours. Contraindications. Benadryl is contraindicated in patients with a known hypersensitivity to Benadryl or any of its components. Storage. Benadryl should be stored at room temperature in its original container. Excessive humidity should be avoided. Disclaimer, Medical News Today has made every effort to make certain that all information is factually correct, comprehensive, and up-to-date. However, this article should not be used as a substitute for the knowledge and expertise of a licensed healthcare professional. You should always consult your doctor or another healthcare professional before taking any medication. The drug information contained herein is subject to change and is not intended to cover all possible uses, directions, precautions, warnings, drug interactions, allergic reactions, or adverse effects. The absence of warnings or other information for a given drug does not indicate that the drug or drug combination is safe, effective, or appropriate for all patients or all specific uses.